Good morning. I want to thank all of you for joining us today. We have an excellent lineup of speakers, and we're joined by City of Tacoma Park Mayor Kate Stewart, City of Rockville Mayor Bridget Newton, City of Gaithersburg Council Vice President Michael Sesma, Delegate Kumar Barve, and Rockville Council Member Monique Ashton. We begin this morning by remembering the eight victims of the devastating shootings in Georgia Tuesday evening. Delena, Ashley, Yuan, Paul Andre Michaels, Xiaojia Tan, Daoyo Fong, Julie Park, Hyun Jong Park, and two other victims whose identities have not yet been released. Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. The unspeakable violence in Atlanta, in which six of the eight victims were Asian women, is unfortunately only the latest of many attacks against the AAPI community. Hateful attacks that were meant to break spirits and instill fear. But this is not new. This has been going on for well over a year. The group Stop AAPI Hate has logged nearly 3,800 attacks from all 50 states and 500 in the last two months. And there are many more that were not reported. But we cannot let racists and white supremacists win by imposing fear and intimidation on our neighbors. That is not who we are in Montgomery County, and that is why we're here this morning. No one should be afraid to leave their home, to ride transit, to work to, or school, to practice their faith because of who they are. No one should be forced to look over their shoulder because of their appearance or their language. Discrimination, harassment, and violence are not only deeply wrong, they are illegal. They cannot be rationalized or excused or ignored and will not be tolerated in Montgomery County. We cannot be silent. Congress must pass the No Hate Act and the Department of Justice must prosecute AAPI hate. And our state and local governments must act too. <clears throat> You'll hear this morning from government and community leaders at every level to explain how we're taking collective action in solidarity with our AAPI community. But we cannot stop at creating safe spaces. We all have a role to play to create a safe culture. Anti-Asian racism and the white supremacy that fuels it is a societal poison that has afflicted our nation for hundreds of years. And we've seen in the last five years how racist thought and action grow when, when, when they're encouraged and normalized. On the night that President Trump was elected, we saw hate crimes against Latinx churches in Silver Spring and destruction of Black Lives Matter banners a mile from my house. And hate crimes continued to rise in our county and our nation throughout the last four years. And now, after President Trump's statements over the last year, we've seen this outrageous rise in AAPI hate crimes of over 150% in the year 2020. There's a thread that runs through these trends in recent years, and we have to end it. The cure for racism is for all of us to stand up and speak out forcefully against even the smallest acts of intolerance and bigotry and to take action. We cannot normalize it or rationalize it away or pretend that it's protected speech. That is not tolerance, that's an abdication of our responsibility. We have to call it out and we have to take actions to counteract it. And as you'll hear from our officials, we'll prosecute it to the fullest extent. Every time we do so, we help heal our culture and prevent more sickness. We are one Montgomery County. We believe in inclusion, compassion, tolerance, opportunity and sacrifice for others. And that's one reason people have chosen to come here from around the world for generations to call this place our home. We embrace our differences. We appreciate our common humanity and we reject xenophobia, bigotry and violence. This is a message that every one of us in Montgomery County must send loud and clear. Montgomery County has over 160,000 AAPI residents. Your history, your heritage and your contributions have built this county. You are Montgomery County. We are lucky to share this great county with you and to call it our home, but we are here to listen and to respond today. But we want you to know that you are not alone, that all of us have your back and stand united with you today and every day. I also need to recognize Wafa Jawad from Senator Van Hollen's office and our state's attorney, John McCarthy, are here as well. First, I'll, return, I'll introduce state delegate Kumar Barbe, who needs to return to the house. Kumar. 
Jamar, you're muted. Thank you very much, uh, uh, President Hucker, uh, County Executive Elrich, members of the council and municipal leaders throughout Montgomery County. I'd like to um, read a statement from the um, Maryland Legislative Asian American Pacific Islander Caucus, I might. Regardless of the motivation, Tuesday's murder of seven Asian women in Atlanta, Georgia reminds us that anti-Asian violence has increased exponentially by 149% since the COVID-19 crisis began last year. Over 3,800 reports of anti-Asian hate crimes have been documented since March, 2020. And that certainly undercounts the number of incidents experienced by Asian American and Pacific Island, uh, Islanders. Anti-Asian violence is not new. Historically, the Asian American and Pacific Island community have, has been victimized, berated, and killed from the time of the Chinese Exclusion Act to the Japanese American internment during World War II to the post 9-11 violence against Muslims and Sikhs to the current Asian, uh, current anti-Asian climate exacerbated by misinformation and racist remarks uh, about COVID-19. This latest example of violence against our community has compounded the pain, anger, and fear we all experience in our daily lives. For this reason, we call on all Marylanders to condemn all manifestations of racism, xenophobia, discrimination, and anti-Asian sentiment and scapegoating. We also ask that all Marylanders reject the use of disparaging terms such as Chinese virus or Kung flu, which have fueled everything from verbal assaults to physical attacks toward those of Asian descent. We recognize that many victims are reluctant to report hate crimes or incidents of harassment because they believe their report will not be taken seriously. Many also believe that reporting a crime will only make matters worse. We implore you not to suffer in silence. We must raise our collective voices against these incidents for the good of the AAPI community and for all of our society as a whole. Um, Mr. President and members of the county and municipal governments and fe fellow Marylanders, um, I just want you to know that we are very proud to serve the Maryland General Assembly as Americans and as Asian Americans. I'd like to read the names of the people who, who are a part of the Asian American Pacific, Pacific Islander Caucus. And they are Chris Valderrama, who is the chair, uh, Senator Clarence Lamb, who's the first, first vice chair, Mark Chang, the second vice chair, Delegate Hari Bandari, outreach community, uh, committee chair, and also Wanika Fisher, Delegate David Moon, uh, Delegate Lily Chi, Senator Susan Lee, and myself, Delegate Kumar Barve. I'm very proud to serve. I'm so happy that now it's not just two, but 11 members uh, in our uh, legislature. And I want you to know that all of us appreciate the sentiments and the actions that the Montgomery County government and other friends to all uh, uh, to all Americans have uh, have extended. And so thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to express the views of the Asian American Pacific Islander members of the Maryland General Assembly. Thank you so much, Delegate Barve. We really appreciate all your leadership over the years, many years, and, um, and all the leadership of the AAPI Legislative Caucus and the General Assembly. Let me turn it over to the County Executive. I was just checking to make sure I wasn't muted. Um, first, I wanna thank everybody for joining us here today. Um, this is a hard way to come together, uh, but a necessary way for us to come together. Um, we're used to, you know, more celebrations and, and more, you know, discussions of the work we do together than having to come together and this really grievous situation that exists. Um, They've given you the statistics on the hate crimes. We know that there are potentially hundreds of thousands more. Most people don't report.
support every insult, every incident that they experience. Um, people should not have to bear this in silence. And we have laws that are meant to protect people. And I would implore people to, if you experience it, report it. If you are the victim, don't be a silent victim. Put your name forward so we can deal with the people who are out there in the community intent on perpetrating hate. Um, you know, as the weather changes and as you know, restrictions begin to lift, there is a risk of even more increase in these crimes. And the rise in hate crimes against Asians is shameful. And our Asian community members, you know, should not have to be living in fear. And this is direct result of, you know, the xenophobia and blame and racist talking points from the pre previous administration. I won't repeat the words that they used because I don't want to give validity to the words that they used. But the things they said and the way they framed this virus is absolutely shameful and has done nothing but incite anti-Asian feelings in the community and anti-Asian activities. Um, I will tell you, we've already done this, but I want to reiter reiterate the Montgomery County government and our agencies are not going to refer to the COVID-19 or coronavirus by any other name other than its technical or scientific name. No other name that promotes xenophobia or assigns blame or you know, fosters hate against the Asian community will be used ever by the county government. It is not a joke. It is not funny. Um, it is not clever. It is vile and hateful to use the language that the previous president assigned to this. Um, this county is not going to tolerate crimes against the Asian community. I've instructed my staff to reach out to the Asian community to offer resources and protection, including patrols around neighborhoods and businesses to provide a peace of mind and sense of security. Um, if you have any questions, need any assistance, reach out to the Asian liaison, Mr. Yi Shen. If you would like to coordinate increased police patrols or if you have other concerns. And if anybody's experiencing hate crimes, please report it to the Montgomery County Police Department. Police will investigate every reported incident. 911, if it's an emergency, and 301-279-8000, if it's not an emergency. But we need to hear from the community so we can investigate and put a stop to this type of behavior. Um, this is not new in America, unfortunately. Uh, this country has had uh, a sad history of racial relations across, you know, multiple groups of people who've come to America. These groups, like the Asian community, they come here, they build their lives here, they help us build a better country, and they should not be subjected to hate. This needs to be in our history. We've got, we've got to take it out of the present. Um, and unfortunately, it continues to linger in the present. Um, this solidarity event is no means the end of our work on this issue, and we're going to continue. I'll be joining Police Chief Marcus Jones and Councilmember Sidney Katz and the Office of Human Rights Director James Stowe in an Asian Community Safety Conversation on April 1st. Uh, Mr. Yi Shen, will, our Asian liaison, will be sending out invitations for RSP and information to the community very soon. Planning is also underway for community dialogue with Montgomery County Public Schools to address the fears of Asian parents over potential bullying and hate bias incidents. Um, you will send that information out as soon as possible. Like I said, um, you know, racism, xenophobia, and hatred are cyclical in this country. Uh, we have not yet been able to come to terms with the concept that we're all one people that we're all united by our common humanity. Many of us have, but there are portions of the community that have not gotten there. And we need to continue our work to make sure that everyone understands that at the core of it all, we're all human beings. We should have the same rights. We should have the same freedoms, including the freedom from fear. And we should have the same opportunities. So we're gonna continue in Montgomery County uh, to work to do that. Uh, hate is not in our DNA. This county for a long time has taken strong stands against acts of hatred against groups in our county. And we're gonna continue to do that. And I express my condolences to the Asian community for this latest incident, which is truly tragic. Um, and 
you know, absolutely inexcusable. Uh, I won't even go into what the police chief said down there the other day, but uh, to explain away what happened the way he did is just absolutely unbelievable and insensitive in this day and age. This is not the way we're going to do things in Montgomery County, I assure you. And we stand with you and we will always stand with you. So thank you for uh, giving me a few moments here and I look forward to working with everyone on this. Thank you, County Executive Elrich. Our next speaker is Ariani Ong, the founder of the Montgomery County Progressive Asian American Network. Ariani. Thank you, President Hunter. On behalf of Mokopan, I thank the County Council and the County Executive for holding this unity event by having our county leaders speak out swiftly and forcefully against hate crimes, we as a community are rejecting its message. Instead, we are sending this message. You do belong. Whether you're a person of color, a woman, an immigrant, a non-Christian, LGBTQ, or other minority. So we are grateful for your statements, which carry the power to reassure and to heal. In particular, I wanna thank council member Evan Glass and Bianca Laura from his office and Yi Shen for reaching out and inviting us to speak on the national rise of hate against Asian Pacific Americans and local stories. Nationwide, the Asian American community is experiencing an unprecedented spike in hate incidents, spreading wide fear and concern. Since last March, 3,800 hate incidents targeting Asian Americans have been reported. Of those, 165 hate incidents were in the DMV area. People are largely experiencing verbal harassment, shunning and spitting, but also physical attacks, like a knife attack on a Burmese American father and his children ages two and six. Among the various reasons for why this is happening, two stand out. There are some members of the public who are misperceiving Asian Americans as number one, COVID-19 carriers, in a familiar pattern of racializing diseases from those perceived as foreigners. And number two, as spies, instig instigated by certain persons in influential political and media positions who rally anti-Chinese sentiments beyond the bounds of policy discourse and for political gain. And while the targets are ethnic Chinese, over 50% of the incidents are happening to other Asian ethnic groups. Against the backdrop of national news, a pattern of violent and heinous assaults against senior citizens and robberies and vandalism on Asian owned businesses have amplified the community's fear. Even if the bias motive hasn't legally been established, the latter is happening here and in neighboring Howard County and Northern Virginia. In the county, fortunately, there have been few incidents reported. Local anecdotes include political signs that read also Wuhan virus along 355 in Clarksburg, verbal harassment of Asian Americans taking a walk, an announcement by a school student to his swim teammates, half of whom were Asian Americans, China should be gassed. To that end, Mokopan calls on community leaders uh, to do two things. Number one, address the system of structural racial inequities, particularly impacting communities of color, and also to support the Asian American community in ways which we have detailed in a statement that we will send to you after the press conference. I'd like to end with a direct message to Representative Chip Roy, who yesterday extolled lynching at yesterday's congressional hearing on anti-Asian violence. You do not get to exploit the tragedy of the Asian American community to invoke the peak embodiment of white supremacy violence on Blacks. No, not on our watch. Thank you. Thank you, Ariana. That was an outrageous comment yesterday. Thank you, thank you for all your leadership. Next, we have a video message from Maryland Senator Susan Lee. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to thank and commend you um, for standing up and denouncing these uh, racially motivated attacks and violence against our Asian Americans and Pacific Islands. It's been really awful here and also in our nation. 
the shooting and murdering of uh, eight individuals in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, six being um, women of Asian descent, is it's just horrific and terrible and heartbreaking. And uh, but yeah, this is not the only incident, as you mentioned. Uh, we, we have incidences in California where an elderly Thai American man was shoved and beaten and he died from his wounds. We have an incident in Texas where a father with his, uh, two, with his sons were stabbed in the head and their head was almost carved out. We have an incident of a woman in New York subway who was uh, attacked and assaulted. And also, even in Maryland, in Montgomery County, in Rockville, Maryland, uh, an Asian American family's home was uh, attacked twice. Uh, but fortunately, our wonderful um, Chief Jones and, uh, and Chief Vogue uh, came to their assistance. And, uh, but um, we also had an incident in downtown Bethesda where a woman was attacked. But fortunately, be, uh, the bystanders, they stood up and they came to her aid and she was saved. And I, th I don't know who those bystanders are, but whoever they are, I hope they hear this because I want to thank them, thank them for what they did because they stood up, they stood up against injustice. So unfortunately, um, the past toxic political rhetoric, disparaging statements against uh, immigrants, Asian Americans, people of color, women and people of all backgrounds have contributed to uh, a lot of this violence and all this political scapegoating, especially during this horrible pandemic. It's been terrible. Uh, persons in the highest of office in the past have called the COVID-19 Kung flu or the China virus. We are not a walking virus. My, my family has been in here for third generations. And uh, Asian Americans have also served in the United States Armed Forces in many wars, including my father. My father was a World War II U.S. Navy veteran who defended freedom on the perilous Atlantic and Pacific. And he, like others of Asian descent and people of color, they face overwhelming discrimination. And Asian Americans, and particularly Chinese Americans, faced the Chinese Exclusion Act. But yet they wanted to defend freedom. And that group was called the Greatest Generation. And they defended freedom during one of the darkest periods in the history of our world. But often our achievements have been marginalized and gone unrecognized, just like a lot of people of color and people from all backgrounds. But you know what? We all built America, and we should all support America through our rich diversity. So um, I want to say uh, I've never been prouder than serving in Maryland, because Maryland is a great state. And I've never been prouder of my JPR chairman and vice chairman and my JPR colleagues who are here today who work tirelessly on bills to promote greater justice and face and address the issue of systemic racism. They, they fought tirelessly. They worked all night on this. And um, I, I thank them for what they are doing. So um, I'd just like to thank everyone, particularly my wonderful president and my other colleagues, too, particularly on JPR, who are standing up against these attacks and racial injustice. And I, I ask others to join us in fighting injustice so that we can make this a better world for all of us and for future generations. Thank you, Mr. President, for allowing me to provide these remarks. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Majority Whip. Thank you so much, Senator Lee. Our next speaker is Vice President Gabe Albernoz, and I especially want to thank Council Vice President Albernoz for all his leadership to organize today's event. Gabe. Thank you, Mr. President. It was certainly a team effort, and it is so important to come to together today and every day uh, to denounce and speak against racism, to speak against hate, and to speak, frankly, against ignorance. It's also important for us to stand up for unity, for inclusion, in the acknowledgement and celebration of the fact that our AAPI community contributes to every fabric and every corner of our society, culturally, economically, socially, and academically. We thank them for their leadership. We thank them for their partnership. 
You are our neighbors, you are our friends, you are part of the Montgomery County family, and we are honored that you are here helping us move forward every day. I especially want to acknowledge as the chair of the Health and Human Services Committee, the Asian American Health Initiative, which has been on the front lines for over a decade in helping to provide an important bridge to our Asian community through public health. We have heard stories this past year of the challenges on our emotional and social well being of our Asian community. And as was so stated so beautifully before, we must address the systemic issues that didn't just occur this year, but have been long standing in our community. I and all of my colleagues and all of our friends and partners through our regional service center directors, our friends in, uh, in, in municipal leadership positions stand together and united. And I especially also want to thank our community based organizations and incredible leaders who work with us every day. This is a dark time. Uh, we will get through it. We will get through it together. And I'm hopeful for our future because of events like this. Thank you. Thank you, Council Vice President. Let me get to the rest of my colleagues before we turn it to a number of community leaders who will be speaking. Council Member Andrew Friedson. Thank you to Council President, Council Vice President, everybody for joining us for this really important event. Uh, attacks, harassment, and hatred against our AAPI community will not be tolerated in Montgomery County. It's not who we are. It's not what we do. And we must continue to call out the people, many of whom hold the most prominent positions, who refuse to understand or just flat out ignore the impact of hateful and xenophobic words when they attempt to ascribe a race to a pandemic. It's racist, it's abhorrent, it's a lie. Last year, we recognized the rise in hate speech and racist acts towards the members of our API community at the outset of this pandemic, in part because of the reprehensible and absolutely false scapegoating related to COVID that we're continuing to see linger. With support from religious organizations and ethnic-based community organizations, we appropriated $800,000 in security improvement grant funding to ensure we can keep our community safe. Everyone in our community, regardless of race, faith, or background, especially those who have been attacked and threatened. Our racial, religious, cultural, and ethnic diversity is our strength in Montgomery County, and our county government will stand up to protect that diversity and the very people who make it possible. Let's be clear. Viruses have no race, but racism is a virus, a virus that infects our society and has for far too long. In speaking out against the Chinese Exclusion Act in 1869, great Marylander Frederick Douglass said, there are such things in the world as human rights. They rest upon no conventional foundation, but are external, universal, and indestructible. When there is a supposed conflict between human and national rights, it is always safe to go to the side of humanity. So we stand here together on the side of humanity to reject racism, bigotry, and xenophobia, and to speak out against anti-Asian hate and stand firmly with our AAPI friends and neighbors. We are here with you and we stand up with you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Glass. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. And I wanna extend my um, appreciation to all of the AAPI leaders and neighbors who are here with us tonight, uh, this afternoon, standing you know, in, in united leadership with all of us in government. And I'm so proud to be here with you because we stand united as one community. And the hate crimes that took place in Atlanta were absolutely deplorable. The effects of hate crimes are not just felt by the individuals uh, on the receiving end, but by everybody in the community. And I know that during these unsettling times, we have to speak up against white supremacist extremists. And until that deep-seated hatred is uprooted, we'll continue seeing these types of incidents, not just in the AAPI community, but in all groups who are viewed as different. And while the national trend in AAPI hate crimes is alarming, I know that there are many incidents that have gone largely unreported, which is why we need to call out hate, but also call out acts of bigotry that we see sometimes every day.
But here in Montgomery County, we know that we love our diversity and our diversity is our strength. And that is seen in the fact that four of the 10 most diverse communities in the country are here at home. Gaithersburg, Germantown, Silver Spring, and Rockville. And it is my honor and all of our honor to represent these communities, to live in these communities. And I pledge every single day to stand with the AAPI community and commit myself to calling out hate and standing up against hate. So thank you all for being here today. Thank you. Councilmember Jawando. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I'm honored to be here. I'm sad that we're here, but honored to stand alongside our Asian American and Pacific Islander friends and neighbors. You matter and we love you. I've been outraged along with my colleagues and disgusted to witness the hate and violence targeting our Asian brothers and sisters across the country and unfortunately here at home. According to one survey, 32% of Americans have witnessed someone blaming Asian people for COVID-19 over the last year and 60% of Asian Americans have witnessed this behavior themselves, probably a low number as we've discussed. Some have noted in the days following the most recent killings in Atlanta that there exists a complicated relationship between the black community and the Asian community, that there's a tension. Let me be very clear, this is false. That tension has a name. Used by those who seek to employ the age old strategy of divide and conquer that seeks to elevate some, disadvantage others and separate us all. We will not allow this most recent heinous incident, the death of these citizens and residents in Atlanta to pit our communities against one another. We must reject the stain of white supremacy on our nation and in our community. The systemic and racist division of those who are deemed other. Sadly, these last few years have been witness to an upswing in many of these ugly tendencies as misinformation and hate are spread on the internet and from the highest office in the land with demeaning and provocative language, often by public figures and in full view of all. Incidents against the Jewish community, the Latino community, black communities, the LGBTQ community, immigrants, and of course our Asian brothers and sisters who we stand in solidarity with and lift up today. Racial division, hate, and systemic racism are rooted in the white supremacist movement, and it's rotten to the core. Dr. Bernice King, the daughter of Dr. King, has encouraged us, saying the solution to racism is to see and love each other deeply. And that's what we seek to do here in Montgomery County and in Maryland. As an at-large council member, it's my responsibility, and indeed my deep honor, to represent every resident of this county no matter their ethnicity, their race, their economic status, their gender or their gender identity. Our county is a remarkable place and we must make sure that everyone feels safe here in their home. We're here today to say clearly and with a resounding voice that Asian hate has no place in our country, no place in our state and no place in our county. In the words of the late great civil rights activist, Yuri Kochiyama, we are all part of one another. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Katz. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I am proud to join with everyone today for this uh, necessary and emotional unity event. I'm horribly sorry that we had an event that prompted us to join together today. I have said time and time again that a community is a family. And we will not allow anyone to have fear in our community or in our family. As the chair of the Public Safety Committee, I can tell you that hate crimes are taken seriously. And then I sincerely thank everyone in the AAPI community for what they do for all of us each and every day. I am proud to stand together with you today and every day. And I can tell you together, we will be even stronger. So I sincerely thank you. And thank you, Mr. President, for allowing me to say a few words. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Nevado. 
Thank you, Mr. President. I join my colleagues in support of our Asian American Pacific Islander community during what is clearly one of the most hate-filled periods of our country's history. Let me be clear, an attack on one community is an attack on every community. As an immigrant and as a woman of color, I firmly believe that we are one family and that we must care for each other. 2020 saw the flames of hate fanned by those who were elected to lead this country. You can draw a direct line from the rhetoric which attempted to place the blame for the spread of this pandemic squarely on the shoulders of those of Chinese origin to the fear and anguish felt today by members of our Asian American Pacific Islander community. Words have power and it is our national shame that we have to be reminded of this truth again and again. El Paso, Poe, Pittsburgh, and now Atlanta. How many more of these heinous crimes must be committed before we as a country decide that enough is enough? Simply expressing condolences is not enough. We need to stand together and actively push back against this wave of hate. We need to actively work to promote once more that American diversity is American exceptionalism. It breaks my heart every time I participate in one of these events because I know that we are better. Stop the hate, stop the violence, and remember what drives people from around the world to make the journey to our shores. Freedom, hope, inclusion, and love. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to express my absolute concern, worry, and solidarity. And I also want to say that I am so proud and fortunate that in Montgomery County, we don't sit back, we always stand up. And to our Asian Pacific Islander community, just know that you are part of our family and that we will also always stand up with you. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Rice. Well, thank you very much. And let me remind folks, our children are watching. The pain that's been levied on the Asian American, Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander community is all too familiar. It's one that as a young man of color growing up here in Montgomery County, I recognize and see and understand the hurt. And we need to be cognizant as we return to in-person learning about the impact that this is going to have on our children and our future generations. Unfortunately, this is a sign of the normalization of hate speech, the normalization of white supremacy, the normalization of racism, the normalization of separatism, all of the things that I believe were fostered by the previous administration. And it is unfortunate because now we are seeing it eke into those, not only as adults, but our young children who are going to be impacted for decades to come. And so I urge everyone, not just on this call, who is of like-mindedness. We all are in this and agree that this is egregious. We all agree that this is not acceptable. We all agree this is not okay and needs to change. I'm speaking to those who are actually perpetrating the fraud, those who are perpetrating the lie, those who know what they're saying and doing is wrong. Our children are watching, please, for the sake of them and for the sake of our future society, let's make a change. Let's actually go back to where we were, a place of acceptance, a place of making sure that each and every one of us was valued, a place where we celebrated the fact of lifting up each other and not tearing each other down. It's not that hard to do. And so I ask you to look in your heart and make sure that you understand that we are not different. We are the same. We have the same loves, wants, and likes as everyone else, regardless of how we look, what our physical characteristics are, who we choose to love, whatever it is that we do, we are the same. We are human beings. And together, when we are united, we make an even stronger community, a stronger state, a stronger nation, a stronger world. So let's do it together. Release the hate. And remember, our children are watching. Thank you.
Thank you, Council Member Reamer. Thank you, Council President. Um, we, we're here today to denounce hate and violence. Um, and let us also remember how we are going to take action to stamp it out. We must confront organized expressions of racism and violence. It is very welcome news that the Biden administration and our new Attorney General Merrick Garland will prioritize investigations of extremist right-wing networks and the violence that they practice. We must also confront social expressions of racism because they create the conditions of violence. Characterizations of Asian Americans that are any, you know, any characterizations of Asian Americans are unacceptable. And we must all do everything that we can in our daily lives to increase the safe space in this country where racism against Asians is rejected. As Ms. Ong said, and as an elected official representing this entire county, I want every member of our Asian American community to know indeed that you do belong. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> our, ne <clears throat> our next speaker is Dr. Chi Xiang Li, Executive Director of Chinese Culture and Community Services. Dr. Li. Dr. Lee, you're muted. I represent uh, Chinese uh, Culture and Community Service Center. I would like to express my sincere appreciation for County Executive and County Council to host this uh, joint solidarity for AAPI. It is both timely and essential. As we gather here, we, the AAPI communities, can truly feel the warm care and the love pouring over us from the place I call home, Montgomery County. Following the murder of six women of Asian descent, I was deeply disturbed by the statement made by the Congressman Roy of Texas and his follow-up written statement. It shows that they don't really care anymore. In the meantime, I applaud Congresswoman Grace Mann's strong and emotional rebuttal. This is the right way to do it. And we all sh should be doing that when confronted with bigotry and hate. As a part of the AAPI community, we appreciate everything Montgomery County have done for us from county executive, county council, and our police department. Here's what the CCACC management have communicated to our employee, our clients, and our members. We want them to take every precaution to protect themselves first, stay vigilant in their daily life, and most importantly, speak out when incidents happen. We are all in this together and use CCACC model Together we can. With your help, we will overcome. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to contribute to this cause. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you so much, Dr. Lee. Next up is Tho, Tho Tran, the Executive Director of the Vietnamese American Service. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Montgomery County leaders, to organize this event. And thank you for the opportunity to speak on behalf of the Vietnamese community. Um, I want to share my experience, uh, personal experience uh, of hate crime to um, our group. Um, on June 2020, last year, when we were uh, distributing food in the uh, um, parking lot in Gatesburg, uh, I was with six other volunteers. And one man come over and uh, start harassing and um, talk uh, something racist about our group, we were scared and we quiet. We didn't react because we uh, we afraid that we may escalate uh, the situation. And then after a few minutes, he said, go back to the country, go back to the country, he yelling at us and he left. Um, but um, yes, a few days ago when we heard about the 
mass shooting in Atlanta. A lot of nail workers, they work at the nail salon and they have to leave work late at night. They share the scare and concern. They say that be careful if you walk out of uh, the parking lot late at night, um, they will meet someone, maybe harass them and do violence. Uh, but I think after this meeting, I will come back to share with my people um, that uh, we always have a support and protection from Montgomery County leaders. And we will not scare, we will stand up and unite together. And we know that uh, we will work together to uh, combat the harassment and violence to Asian. And thank you very much for your confirmation and stand, stay together with us. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tran. Next, we have Dr. Ji Young Cho, the Executive Director of the Korean Community Services Center of Greater Washington. Dr. Cho. Yes, uh, good morning. Uh, we thank you for the time and opportunity to share our concerns that were addressed today. Thank you to our county and community leaders for your support for the Korean American community and its residents in Montgomery County. Korean Community Service Center and the Korean American community is devastated by the terrible violence in Atlanta and we mourn with the families of these victims. Our community has been on guard with the recent string of hate directed against Asian Americans, but Atlanta's incident has shocked us all. Our hearts go out to all those who are experiencing the feelings of grief and anger. Korean Community Service Center stands with the Atlanta community and calls upon all Americans to protect and support one another during this time of tragedy. We strongly condemn all acts of violence and discrimination against our Asian communities. KCSC is in touch with local community leaders and officials, and they will continue to monitor this situation. We stand in solidarity against with all our Asian American community. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Next, we have Dr. Huynh Huynh, the chair of the Asian American Health Initiative. Dr. Huynh. Thank you, Council President Hucker, um, County Executive Average, and Council Vice President Abanos, and other council member for hosting this event today. It's very comforting to hear your word of understanding, sharing the pain that the Asian American community has been experiencing in the past few months. The event in last Tuesday is just one of the many events that make the stress level increase significantly. I want to echo the message of my community leaders colleagues had just mentioned earlier. And I want to highlight the important and the impact of mental health that it leaves to the Asian American community. It has been tremendous. And as Council Member Rice mentioned earlier, it is can it can impact our next generation. This has had a tremendous impact to the community if not been addressed. So I do hope this is the beginning of many conversations that we will have to address racism in our community as we move forward. Two quick notes that I want to bring up that Asian American is not a homogeneous community. We have many different subgroups with the diverse culture and that's the beauty of our community. And that is also the contribution we can bring forward. And we need to dispel the model minority myth that we'll have with Asian American so that we can encourage the Asian American community member to move forward. And as an Asian American Health Initiative Steering Committee Chair, I feel very, it's a privilege that living in this county where we have many of the community-based organization to work together to serve the Asian American community. And the partnership that we have observed together and with the county has been tremendous. We look forward to continue to further that partnership as we move forward to really address this hate crime that we experience and help to promote the health and wellness of our community. Thank you. 
Thank you, Dr. Quinn, and thank you to all for your powerful words. We'll return to some of our key county staff, and let me first recognize and thank all our regional service directors who are here with us today as well and every day. Our next speaker is Chief of Police, Marcus Jones. So good morning, um, and again, thank you for allowing me to uh, share just a few words. Again, my deepest sympathies to the AAPI community, um, not only here in Montgomery, County, but all across uh, the country and the world uh, for this horrendous act uh, that was committed um, this past week in Atlanta. On behalf of all of our law enforcement partners here in Montgomery County, uh, from Montgomery County Police, uh, Rockville City Police Department, Gaithersburg Police Department, our Montgomery County Sheriff's Department, Tacoma Park Police Department, as well as Maryland National Capitol Park Police Department, I want to uh, on behalf of all of them, say to uh, the AAPI community and our community that Montgomery County Police and all of our law enforcement partners are committed to making sure uh, that our communities are safe, uh, that this community, the AAPI community is protected. Um, and we want to make sure that the community has the utmost amount of confidence um, in reporting any incidents whether they be hate crimes or bias incidents to uh, our law enforcement agencies. And we take these events very seriously. Um, and I want to say we every incident will be investigated um, and, and events that can be prosecuted. Um, I am sure working with our, our partner, um, State's Attorney John McCarthy, that these incidents will be fully prosecuted uh, to the full extent of the law. Um, we have already begun, as the county executive uh, noted early in his comments, to provide extra patrols uh, to uh, the, the business communities um, in the AAPI community, as well as um, uh, the neighborhoods. Uh, our officers are on high alert uh, for any event. Uh, we've done some business checks uh, with some of our massage parlors, as an example, um, and beyond. So we encourage that. Uh, individuals who want to uh, send in tips anonymously um, that may be afraid for whatever reason, uh, there is an option for you to do that, um, as noted on the resources page that is being distributed. Um, and we also, again, encourage you to contact us as we want to know um, how uh, we want to know these incidents that are occurring so that we can address them um, to make sure that the community feels safe. Um, in any regard, whether it be the business or the, the neighborhoods um, in Montgomery County. So again, please feel free to reach out to us. We are partners in keeping our community safe. And thank you. Thank you so much, Chief. Let me get to Dr. Michael Lynn, the president of the Asian American Alliance. Dr. Lynn. Thank you very much. I must say it is overwhelming to see the support given to Asian American community, yes. This is Montgomery County. And today we send a message loud and clear that we do not tolerate this kind of prejudice. Um, a lot has been said, so let me just make two quick points. One is that it's very important for our community to be out there, make an effort out there. Even though we represent 15% of the county population, but very often we are not visible. The only time I really see a lot of Asian American out there is uh, when we celebrate Lunar New Year uh, at uh, Lake Forest Mall, for example. And as a contrast, uh, we can almost count with both hands at an event such as uh, Montgomery, uh, Committee for Montgomery, Montgomery, as you know, that's one of the major gathering for planning the future of the county. And unless we are there, very often we are just not visible and uh, to remind others that we are part of the community, a part of the family. And the second point is that when there's a victim, we would like to have a system to have somebody accompany that victim somebody known to the victim, and then so that person can trust, be trusted. 
And it is just so much comforting for the victim to deal with any tragic event, such as reporting to the police or describe his, his experience to the medical staff from the ambulance. And uh, we, as the community-based organization, we should be able to help in this aspect that is trains our staff, community member, and be ready and willing to support the victim. And uh, thank you again to the county leadership and community leaders. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Lin. Next up is uh, Director James Stowe from our Office of Human Rights. Thank you so much and good morning, uh, Council, Council President Hucker and to all that are gathered here today. First and foremost to the Asian community, you are not alone. What impacts the Asian community impacts the entire community, the kind of community we're working to build through relationships across racial, ethnic, religious, and cultural categories and earning and trust in each other every day. People who commit acts of hate and intimidation do so believing that no one will care or respond to the plight of the victim because it's not their group. That could be no more wrong here in Montgomery County. We will and do respond. As been said, if you are a victim or see activity occurring in our community, call the police and then call the Office of Human Rights. Committee against hate violence, resources, monetary relief for loss of property and personal injury, and ongoing support will be available to you. We will pursue rigorously compliance to the fullest extent of the law to the Asian community. We are all Asian today and stand in solidarity with you. We can never be all that we can be in as a community until all of us can be all that we can be and enjoy the fullest extent of freedom, safety, and opportunity. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Well said as always. Our final speaker is, is uh, the acting manager of the Asian American Health Initiatives, Jasmine Vim. Jasmine. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this opportunity in joining today's event. I thank the council and the county executive and the, all of our community leaders for this opportunity and for hosting this event. With these hate crimes and acts of violence against the Asian American community and it becoming our reality, the mental health of the Asian American community is deeply impacted. And in the pain and fear this reality brings, our culture teaches us to withdraw, save face and endure in silence. We know this and see this across the board when it comes to many health and social needs. But I can tell you that with, um, we, we know of increased in anecdotal reports of anxiety and depression, especially in our Amer Asian American youth, our small business owners, and many of our frontline and essential workers. AHI has been busy developing resources for the community in light of COVID-19, one of them being our mental health, uh, multilingual mental health video series um, used, that are used to uh, develop and raise awareness in COVID-19 and various mental health topics. These topics include how to manage stress, grief and loss, social connections, self-care, and recently stigma and discrimination. The text and audios for these videos are available in English, Chinese, Hindi, Korean, and Vietnamese. Each of these videos provides an overview of the topic and brings an awareness, steps on how you can address it, and also an abundant number of resources that you can reach out to for assistance, including where you can report any incidents of hate crimes and discrimination. It's it really important to acknowledge and ask questions and reach out and educate yourself. These resources are here to help bring confidence in reporting these issues. 
we need to bring we need to bring these issues to light so that we can do something about it and not turn a blind eye and we need to stay vigilant and overcome this together. So again, I say that the Asian American Health Initiative is here and we are here to support the diverse Asian American community and we will connect you to resources. Again, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Ms. Finn. And thank you to all our speakers and everyone who joined us today. Thank you so much to so many of our community partners and our leaders who didn't get a chance to speak, but who make contributions every single day. We'll put the slides back up with contact information for resources, including our crisis center and our Asian American Health Initiative that are also available every day. And again, please let us know where there may be gaps and what else we could be doing to provide additional support. To every member of the AAPI community, we want you to know we stand with you, we are here to listen and to support you, and we look forward to more conversations like this in the days and months ahead. Thank you all for joining us today and thank you all for so much of what you're doing every day.